please welcome Mark Lynn Baker, Bronson Pinchel, Perfect Strangers panel. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. So nice to have you guys. Hey fans, do you want to watch Perfect Strangers? It's available on Amazon Prime Video. Not an Amazon Prime member? Try it free for 30 days. You get access to Amazon original programming plus thousands of movies and shows, including Perfect Strangers. Plus, free and fast shipping on millions of products. Click the link in the description to start your free trial today. We got microphones there for you, just click them on. <laughs> so we're starting already. Uh, before uh, we get to the audience questions, I got something I kind of would like to bounce off you guys real quick. There was a, a spin-off show, uh, Family Matters. Uh, was there any, any plan to have your characters on that show ever? We were, and we got cut out. We were in the pilot. Really? Yeah, we were on the pilot because the mother on that show was our elevator operator, and uh, we were in the pilot, and then they, they just edited us out. Well, it didn't hurt our feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing is that actress, uh, Joe Marie jo Payton Fred, lovely woman, warm-hearted, she could not remember two lines together to save her life. Wow. And then she used to yell at herself. So she would go like, um, if she had to say, hi, Mark Lynn Baker, she'd say, hi. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mark, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, where do I go? And <laughs> she, would, she would do that for every line, right? Is that an exaggeration? Uh, yes. <laughs> Mark. Yes. Didn't she used to do that? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Wow. <laughs> Missing the line wasn't the thing. It was the it was this it was the explosion yes. of uh, of self uh, of, you know Play abuse. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Mark. It's time for you to answer a question. Okay. What's the question? Uh, oh. You guys got questions? Oh. Right down here. Let's get right to them. So um, the the answer, Joy. How did did you guys come up with that, or was it something in the writing? The writers yeah. came up with pretty it? pretty much all the physical business on the show was if it was suggested in the script it was something that we worked out uh, and sometimes it wasn't even suggested it just script. said it's just said in the script because they knew us by then yes they knew that they were they we would just do so it's just said in the script uh, they go out the door oh uh, no yeah and that would be, and that would be about, but for know. the dance of joy it just said in the script uh, now we are so happy with they do the dance of joy and then in parentheses it said they do the dance of joy so so we did so I went up to Mark, and I said, so we could do, and he goes, yeah, 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 I like that, okay. And I said, and then, like, at the end, and we go, boom, boom, and then we go, yeah, right, and then you just jump up, and I'm, yeah, yeah, and we did it. Yeah. We didn't, I don't think we, I think we just talked about it in those little abbreviated sentences we still use, and then we did it, and it was done, right? We, I, we didn't, uh, maybe two minutes? No exaggeration. Mark. Oh, yes. <laughs> but no, there, it, it just took no time at all. Yes, no, we, we worked very well together, as I recall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. That's did that, did that avoid the question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're good. Right down here. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that episode when you acted like characters on The Honeymooners? and any uh, influence the Honeymooners and that awesome show had on your awesome show. As I recall, when that, when that episode aired, we did, we did an episode where we played the characters from the Honeymooners, and there was, a, there was an introduction uh, that was our characters, and then it did a, you know, a, a dissolve into those uh, characters, and it was uh, like a Honeymooners episode. But when it aired in Los Angeles, there was an air disaster. As I recall, there was some, some event at the uh, airport. So people missed the introduction of the show, and it came back in, and we were already into the Honeymooners, and, uh, and most people thought that uh, our show had been uh, canceled for the evening. You know, I, I went, do, do you all know who David Hyde Pierce is? From, 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 all right, so David Hyde Pierce and I went to school together, did many plays, and the, the, the two best compliments I got on that show were, 
he said, I just happened, I happened to, to turn to the, to the channel by accident, and it took me a minute, one full minute, and this is someone who had done about six plays with me to realize it was you and Mark mm -hmm. and not uh, the original. The other one was uh, Art Carney was still living at the time, and he called me, and I don't remember, I, he loved it, but all I remember was my girlfriend at the time was a photographer, and she, she started to take pictures because I was on the couch of this hotel like this. <laughs> I just couldn't believe, I mean, he was so complimentary and so sweet, but I was in, I was having an out-of-body experience. Yes, I don't know if you recall, but uh, we, we did that show, and it looked like the Honeymooners, and Art Carney uh, reached out to Bronson, and the Jackie Gleason estate reached out to me and said they were going to sue. <laughs> Is that really, is well, yeah. that true? Yes, the Jackie Gleason estate was upset that, that we did uh, a show. I, you never told me that. Well, you know, I'm still paying the, uh, the, the penalty. I can't believe it. Oh. I didn't want you to feel bad. But my, oh my know. gosh, I, you never told me that in all these years. This question way over on the other side of the room. Hey, this is for Bronson, welcome. Uh, David and Hyde Pierce is from Saratoga Springs and so are we, so we knew who you talked about right away. Two things. One, you used the line in your show, don't be ridiculous. And I think you were from Mapos? Mapos. Mapos. And you had an accent. Which, which Did you used I? To use the accent again <laughs> in Beverly Hills Cop. And I'm wondering if it was the same accent. Okay, but so no, hold on. Timeline, timeline, timeline. <laughs> time <line. laughs> Beverly Hills Cop was shot in 1984, and I had just bought a car from an Israeli woman who, as I was driving away, said, don't forget it's unleaded. And I was like, unleaded? <laughs> she was saying unleaded. Oh, geez. But she said everything the way it looked on the page. And she was very, like, she looked like she was made of half molten rubber. And everything she said <laughs> made me laugh. So I did an imitation. Her name was Lily. <laughs> and I did an imitation of her in Beverly Hills Cop. That's 1984. 19, by 1986, when Mark and I tried to do the show, I was taking a vacation in northern Greece when they came up with the idea. And I said, well, I'm, I'm here, I'll just, I'll stay in and study this accent. So, different years, different accents, but the Saratoga Springs thing is dead on. <laughs> was Don't Be Ridiculous an ad lib, or was that in a script? Yes, it was an ad lib because I, I, I had to say, in the very first episode, uh, he said, I was staring at the TV, and Mark was supposed to say, well, you, you, you've got TV. You've got color TV on, on your island, don't you? And I was supposed to say, yes, <gasps> blue. And so I said, well, of course we do. Don't be ridiculous. And then it was obvious that I was fibbing. So that's where, that, was, that was the first one. And, but, but people always, I always said, don't be ridiculous. And people come up to me nowadays and say, say it, I can do a great imitation. Don't be ridiculous. And I'm like, that's not how I say it. It's not how I ever said it. Mark, was, Mark told me a thing once that he was in a taxi cab in New York and he got in and the guy looked in the mirror and said, oh, I know you from that show. Where is Backley? Remember, remember that? There was a while, I was uh, living in New York, and there was a while in the, I think like 88, 89, where there were a lot of uh, Pakistani cab drivers. All the, all the uh, cab drivers were uh, from Pakistan, and they all learned to speak English watching Perfect Strangers. Is that true? Yes, I, I can't tell you how many times I got into a cab and was recognized, and they say, that's how I learned. That is amazing. Yes. You know, my father came over from France in 1931, and he learned his English by watching the same movie five times in a row. Because by the third and fourth time, he'd start to figure out what they surely must be talking about. And that's how he learned English. And you never met him, but, but to the end of his days, have you ever seen an early talkie movie? In early, talk, in early talkies, it's very, it, it, it's a bit stiff and it's a bit stagey. I mean, were you in early talkies? Okay, okay, so, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 
that's how my father's that's how my father spoke English to the, re the end of his days. He sounded like an, well, are you my dad? We got a question down there. Was it a real piano? The, the piano episode? that we carried up the stairs? Was it a real piano? <laughs> no, but in some, wait a minute, in some shots... In some shots it was a real piano. In some shots it was a real piano. I think when it was still at the bottom because we were, I think, rolling it back and forth. As soon as we started to, to take it up the stairs, it was, you know, lightweight. Yes, a piano without the innards. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Let's knock one out over here, right down front in the middle. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for coming to Pittsburgh. Uh, big fan of Noises Off and big fan of Langoliers, so appreciated you both in that. Uh, would you both consider coming back and doing a reboot to see where Larry and Balky are today? Since a lot of shows are doing that right now. Okay, but look at, you see, the answer is the whole back third of this side did not clap. They could <laughs> not care less, and that's the problem. <laughs> We still do it in sync. We still do it. When Mark and I did a thing on the show that we copied from our real lives, we, we laughed very hard at something. We laughed, 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 ha, 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 ha. And we, we put it into the show, but we did it just now. We, we did it, and just as I was doing the little sigh that meant, well, that's so much for that laugh we did at the same time. Yes, those people back there are haters. Hi, haters. No, I'm just to <laughs> I'm, to I'm totally kidding. <laughs> we're right down front. Okay. I love the episode of Pipe Dreams where you were trying to do the plumbing and put on the shower head. Oh, yeah. Oh, how yeah, many times did you have to do that? I mean, it, once. Wow. We did everything once. He, he was asking how wow. many times we had to do. Yeah. In the early years of the show, I would say it for the, at least the first five years, because it's a live audience, once they've seen it, they've seen it. So if, you, if you've made a little mistake and you have to go back, they just don't laugh the same. It's not the same. And we didn't. We didn't know it for a while, but I was, I was allergic to the makeup. Remember the thing I used to do? So every once in a while, I would, I would start doing that with my nose, and it would ruin the take. But whenever we had a big physical scene, for the, I, it later turned out they just changed the makeup, and I was fine. I was allergic. But for the first four years, if it was one of the early scenes of the show where we're just talking, it, it, if we messed up, it would be fine. But when it came to that big, 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 big physical scene, had to be one. And Mark would come and take me by the shoulders look me in the eye and say, okay, we're not going to twitch our nose. We're not going to twitch. We're not going to twitch the nose. And, and, and then we would do it. We did them all in one take. Yes. Never did a, a, a single, because it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been like it was. I mean, that was real. You know, it was real. Yeah, in the later years, when we had uh, different directors, uh, we'd, we'd do the scene and somebody would say, okay, let's do it again. And we would say, why? Yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were spoiled. Well, we, we liked, you know, we, we wanted to do it like it was theater, because there's, there's, how many people were in the audience? A couple hundred. 136. Is that all? No. 136. That can't be. 142. Okay. <laughs> but it was so much adrenaline and so much fun. We didn't want to redo it. it. You know, you just did it. So all the important scenes we did once. Like, like you know, my, my favorite, and I think yours, the Bibby Bob. Oh, the Bibby Bob. Oh yeah, my the Bibby Bob, where we made the yeah. pastries that exploded. We did that. I mean, yeah. we, we, were like, we were like two world-class boxers going into the ring. There was no <laughs> way we were going to redo that because it was just too full of good stuff. And uh, what would happen when we would do those shows is uh, the adrenaline would be through the roof, and then the next day we'd be like rag dolls rag dolls and the problem was we would shoot the show sometimes on wednesday and we'd have to go back to work on thursday and we were we were just ragged just just i was he was he was okay. exhausted i don't know what that was okay that was a pity laugh from that woman i, heard I that. really enjoyed that <laughs> you go sit with the haters <laughs> <laughs> Do you like filming with Eddie Murphy? D 
Did I what? Like what? Do you, did you like filming with Eddie Murphy and Beverly Hills Cop? Did F- I like... F- filming. filming. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, while we were filming, it was really fun. But every time the camera stopped, he would give me a, a very cold look, which turned out to mean you do not look me in the eyes unless the camera's rolling. And I, I had never seen that before. Now, it, it turns out that a lot of people who, I mean, you know, I mean, perfect example, but uh, a, lot, a, a, a lot of people have this thing. Like I, somebody told me recently, uh, we were just exchanging showbiz stories. I was doing a magazine, a magazine shoot, and they said, I, they said, uh, you know, well, what was the weirdest thing anyone ever said to you? I said, well, uh, uh, Eddie Murphy and Denzel Washington both insist that you, you don't dare look them in the eyes unless the camera's rolling. And so this young guy that was directing the photo shoot said, oh, I've, I've got a much better one than that. Yeah, I worked with Beyonce. I said, oh, yeah, really? She looks nice. And he said, you're not allowed to look in her eyes or at her butt. I said, well, how do you avoid the second one? I mean, really, if you're in the same room, if you're in the same room with that butt, what do you do? Where do you put your eyes? Don't you bump into things if you're not looking at it? It can take over the world. <laughs> That's really, can you imagine if, if you came to work and somebody said, oh, yes, just a few rules, uh, no looking at her eyes, uh, yeah, no looking at her buttocks. <laughs> Are you looking at her butt? I mean, can you? <laughs> I apologize for, for Bronson. He can't help himself. <laughs> I'm going to go sit with the haters. A <laughs> 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 question on the far end. Hey, guys. i seen you guys this morning. Um, First off, I want to say thank you for that show, because that was a show that me and my dad watched constantly when we were younger. Um, first off, thank you. He passed away in 2008, so it was kind of like a, a dream come true to meet both of you. I'm sorry to bring down the morale in the room, guys. No, Anyways, no, no. how many times did you guys have to do retakes? Because I've watched Perfect Stranger multiple times, and I've seen you like put your head down when he was saying something, because you were trying oh, to Oh, thank you life. very much for <laughs> blowing my cover. <laughs> All right, I want to tell you. I want to tell you something. I was telling him. He doesn't remember. Thank you. We are, we are like. I always say that Mark and I. Whenever I'm with Mark, I, I feel like it's Thanksgiving, and all the bratty kids have to sit at a separate table, and Mark and I are the two brattiest of the kids. And we, as the people are just, where are they doing now? But anyway, we didn't do very many retakes. And yes, I did laugh. Thank you so much. <laughs> but, the thing that we used to do to each other that gave us the most joy is we would try to find i mean it's like two little brothers but we would try and find ways to torture the other person physically when the other person's pinching. face was on there camera there was pinching going on there was there was pinching going on but we the, the first time we and and then we would you saw study it. the we, film you saw it out at the, the, the tables we, we, trying to sign on oh yes when, whenever mark is taking pinching. a picture at the table i'm digging my fingers into his back because the whole game is if anyone notices, I have bruises. If anyone notices, I have bruises. If anyone notices the the pain, then then he's lost. So we were doing an episode where we were on a narrow mountain ledge, and there were maybe, I'm going to say conservatively, four times we had to pass. One guy had to pass in front of the other guy. So whoever was in back would just dig his fingers into the guy's back and twist as hard as he could. And then when the episode came out, we were scrutinizing it to see if anyone showed suffering <laughs> but the absolute best one he doesn't remember it we were standing getting ready to come in to the apartment and mark was right ahead of me and I, I don't know why but we had to come in really close together and it's still on film I don't know what the episode is but he's standing right in front of me and as the door opens he whips his hand he goes and just smacks me in the junk and it's <laughs> It's still, it's, uh, it's, because I saw it once. I was like, I cannot believe that's in there. 
and he just smacked me as hard as he could in the junk, and then we come in and we're all, that's what, that's what we did. So we tried to make each other break. I, I apologize for Bronson. <laughs> he can't help himself, and let's all go sit with the haters. <laughs> It was so much fun. It was so much fun to do that, and it was our own private little. There was another episode. It was where a we little were, world of hurt. It was a little world of 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 just strange. We were locked in a trunk in one episode. It, we, there was so much pinching going on, and then I'm claustrophobic. So there was a fantastic episode. What's the episode where we got uh, zipped into the sleeping oh, bag? Uh, is that skiing. Car wars. What is it? That's where we were in the Okay, trunk. but what about, there's one where we're zipped the into a sleeping episode. bag. All right, so it's a chemist. We got zipped in the sleeping bag. Very funny. But I'm so claustrophobic. So uh, we would get zipped up in it. And you, there was nothing you could do. You had to have a third person get you out. So we get zipped up in it. And then Mark would, get, you know, make some signal to the prop guy. And the prop guy would come over and, 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 and say, oh, the zipper's broken. How, how we, we don't want to ruin the, how are we going to, just stay in there. And they would keep me in there, and I was streaming sweat and hyperventilating. Oh, that was just fine. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's a very funny bit. Yes, it is. It's, re it's really, really funny, but it, I suffered. <laughs> There's nothing funnier than pain. <laughs> Un unfortunately for the comedians. <laughs> Got a question back, but before that question, what was the usual schedule like? Uh, a table read, then rehearsal, then how, how much time did you guys have to really prep a show? When, when we started, it, it's, uh, the schedule is a week-long schedule for an episode. We'd, we'd work three weeks on, one week off. Uh, you start on a Monday with a read-through and a rehearsal. I'm already bored. Can you get to the... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the question. Damn it. Tuesday is... Uh... Oh, God, he's only at Tuesday. <laughs> And then coffee break. <laughs> lunch usually around <laughs> noon. <laughs> Mark, do you remember what you used to get for lunch every single day for years? Chinese chicken salad. Every, oh. I didn't even know such a thing existed. Chinese chicken salad. They would come in to take the lunch order. A Chinese chicken salad. That's, that's what we got every single day. Chinese chicken salad. I, I don't know. I, it, it, I don't know how you could eat that many canned tangerine slices. <laughs> They're probably still in there. <laughs> Whereas Bronson went weekly to a new diet every, every week. <laughs> An all seaweed diet. <laughs> that was very rigorous. Oh, look, we have newcomers. So anyway, oh, look at you. Look at that smile. Hello. Hi. We're all focused on you, but don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the haters. They were <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a question back there. Hi, uh, this is for Mark, I believe. Oh, uh, fine. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're out of here, Brian. No, that's great. I would just sit uh, over here and feel bad about myself. I think so I'll get under the... In 1994, 1995, I lived in Jersey City, New Jersey. And on a particular Sunday evening, we got a knock on the door. And they said... Uh, the guy from Perfect Strangers wants to use your apartment for an exterior shot. Can we set up and film this? And my girlfriend and I looked at each other and said, yeah. And so for like an hour, a film crew was in our apartment with these huge lights, and I believe it was you down in the middle of the street with a camera filming an expository shot. Does that ring at all to you? That absolutely never happened. It was not. <laughs> But I love the story. Right. <laughs> Unlike the part when he and his girlfriend looked at each other, it gave it a sudden yeah. tension. There was, yes, yes. I, no, you are, you are not mistaken. That um, actually happened. Uh, yes. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for ruining my Sunday night 25 years ago. I'll send you a bill. <laughs> I thought that mustache was some sort of passing fad a few years ago, but, but now it's Wilford, Wilford Brimley. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, 
A question back there. So, thank you guys again for the memories from our childhood. Um, very much appreciated. Uh, so the only exposure we get to you is uh, through the show. Do you guys end up spending any time t with each other uh, any recently um, since the show has ended? I think the last time uh, we we see each other at, at these things, and then Mark, the last time Mark, when Mark comes to the West Coast, we see each other. I don't think I've ever seen you on the East Coast because I'm just not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we, that's not true. I remember I remember walking. <laughs> I remember walking up uh, 7th Avenue with you by, uh, we were walking by the front of a hotel and there were a lot of people out front and, and, uh, and as, we're, as we're walking by, Bronson puts his head down and said, oh, I think they're going to recognize us. And I looked up and said, oh my God, it's Balky Bartokamas. <laughs> I don't remember oh. that. <laughs> But it, so, yeah, it does sound like something you would do. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, let's grab a few more. We got one way on this corner side. Let's get you out. Right no, here. But it's wonderful. Did you? Uh, it was a twofold question. Uh, again, thanks for coming all the way out here. And again, as many others have said, the uh, laughter that you have given us for so many years and to the second, third generation. It's just so wonderful to see our, my children laugh at the things that made me laugh when I was a kid with my parents. Uh, but uh, how long did it take for you guys to get your comedic timing uh, down? Cause I figure it wouldn't take very long for Born you to because it. It, it seemed like it was just spot on. We instantly. had it from the, the, from the minute he walked into the room when we shot the, the, uh, the test scene it was there, never went away, and we never had to talk about it, not ever, not once. The only time we ever talked about timing is if we wanted to mess up each other's timing as a joke, <laughs> but never on camera. And you, it, it was there. It was just there. Yeah, the other question I had was... Uh, I had to work on his hygiene a little bit. <laughs> I, I had to coach him. <laughs> Uh, with the final just a question of showering more often. It uh, wasn't. <laughs> but uh, with the final season, uh, it always was a curiosity to me as to why it was so short. Just like the first season, I know it was more like the first season was just the test, probably. But the final season, it's always been a curiosity of mine why it was so short. You know what? I do. You do? Yeah. They just wanted to get to exactly. You can sell it into syndication if you have. Ex 150 episodes or more. So they, uh, they had 144, and they said, we want to make six more. And we, we hit both, you know, we're moving on to, but they said, let's just do six more to get it to that 150. And they didn't even air right away. They actually aired. I went on to a show. Uh, I, I did a show for a, 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 just a few episodes called The Trouble with Larry and ABC uh, on CBS. And ABC aired those last six episodes against, yes, uh, they aired, they used me to sabotage me. They aired them ag against, yeah, that's when they aired. Interesting story. I like that. Not really. Yeah. Let's get some hater questions. Yeah, I, all right, in the back from the hater section. <laughs> Let's mingle. Okay. No, do you have any questions? Oh, no, no, they're just, they're just want to take a break from the show. They don't even know who we are. <laughs> we got a question ready. Hey, hey guys, oh. thank you for being here. Oh, there you are. Thank you. The highlight of my Friday evening for many years. Great show. Also, by the way, Bronson, you are wonderful on Step by Step. Thank you. Uh, but my question is... Uh, in the final couple seasons, when your characters were married and moved to the suburbs... We never got married. Oh, married other people, okay. <laughs> when the show moved to the suburbs toward the end, uh, what was your feeling about that? Did you feel like the show was maybe past its prime and nearing the end after you moved out of the apartment in Chicago? Do you remember what we did day one on that set? You can go sit with the haters. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, do you remember what we did day one on that yes, set? Yes, I do. We, we came on to, the, yeah. to that suburban set, 
the, the house that we were moving into. And we came onto the set. It had been very carefully set decorated. But it, it, it had been redone. It didn't look like anything our characters would ever have. It was lacy this and pink plaid that. It looked like, I don't know what it looked like. It didn't look like anything that too, no. And so Mark and I, we I, went through. We, we walked took through big the set. boxes. We took the stuff off the and walls. And we took and everything we said, no, off that didn't no. look right to our characters, and we put it in boxes. And we kind of st because it looked like something your great grandmother would have. Now, I don't know. I don't know if we would do the same thing today. We were. It was a little bit harsh. It was. But it was awful. It looked. It literally looked like the. The, the, the community room well, at a, at a was, really expensive yes. uh, nursing facility. It was, it was done without... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't it? We didn't really care. We didn't. We didn't like those episodes. Well, those last couple of seasons, I I stayed very sharp, but. Um, <laughs> some some people lost their edge. I'm just saying. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Okay, you just lip sync. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, we got time. Okay. You, uh, we got time for just like one or two more questions. Okay. All right. And you guys are headed back to your table to sign and hang out. Oh yeah. Yes, we're going to sign each other. You know, right. one thing I'm I'm not sad that it's it's over is that it's, at a certain point in my career, and it was more often than you would guess, um, people would come up, young couples would come up, and the the husband would say, "Would you sign my wife's chest?" And then the chest would be bared. And it was like, why? And, and I, I apologize I, for No, promise. no, this is what, this is what, this he is. He can't help himself. No, they don't do it anymore, thank goodness. But they used to sign, they used to ask, ask you to sign body parts. And it was so awkward. Of course, I did it, but it was just, it was, it was horrific, <laughs> terribly awkward. No, I mean, just, I'm just glad. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Thank you. <laughs> one, one more question. Yeah, one more question. To, to try to get this taste out of my mouth. <laughs> again, thank oh. you again, guys, for so many great memories. Uh, some of the best memories I've had, and me and my brother both iterate, you know, were from of my dad just sitting around the t TV just watching it. And now um, my little son, is sent, he's been watching too. So um, just... One quick question. Do you guys ever take anything off the set, still have at home, that you still keep? <laughs> They're still looking for the vests. <laughs> I have all the vests. <laughs> I, I, I had brought all the... The, the fabric back, the, the hand-woven fabric back from from northern Greece, and I went and found it every year, and I'd bring it in, and they would, you know, they would tailor it and cut it and make it into stuff. But I had found every single one of those, so I I went in on the last day, and I just grabbed them. <laughs> well, they were. I mean, what else would they have done with them? What 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 would they have done with them? A Sandy Duncan special? I mean, what what <laughs> actually could you do with those vests? I want, to, I want to say before we go, okay. because, I, because I hear it a lot, it makes me, uh, makes me feel good. And I think it might even make you feel good. A lot of people say that they watch the show with their families. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it was, it was something that was really important to them and to their families. And uh, that's, that's just uh, something that I'm very proud of. And, uh, and Bronson is too. <laughs> you know the, the one that I the, the the one that I've heard several times that makes this just literally makes my my blood tingle is someone will come up who's like 35 or 40 and they'll say um, when I was a kid my parents were going through a divorce and the only time all week I would laugh would be wow. watching and that is just like wow you know like yep, just everything was bad but then I I would watch that that's a that was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs>
I mean, at the time, they, they were like, you know, it has to stay family, 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 family. We chafed a little bit because we would sometimes have funny ideas and they'd say no. But it ended up being something you really could watch with your great grandmother. And so we're, we're happy that they, they, you know, wrangled us a little bit. Just a little. Every once in a while, we'd want to do something a little, or a little silly or whatever. Yeah. No. We can't thank you enough for doing this, having fun with us, coming out and doing this. Perfect Strangers Reunion, headed back to their table. Rodson Pitchard, Mark Lynn Baker, you can do better than that. Go, oh, come on. Thank you so much. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.